Hi, I'm Matt from TPSTool.com. We talk a lot about adjusting the throttle position sensor, or TPS, but I thought it'd be interesting to talk about what it actually does and how it works. So on any engine, to get the best performance, you've got to have the right mix of fuel and air. The computer that calculates how much fuel to put in needs to know how much air is going in the motor. So one of the sensors it uses is a throttle position sensor, and that sensor tells the computer how far the throttle is open. Uh, to give you an example, I've got our TPS tool pro meter here connected to a throttle body. This is from a KTM. And you'll notice the number on here, uh, 0.46, that's at idle. So as I open the throttle, watch the throttle plate and watch the numbers increase. And this is what the computer sees. So you can see as I open the throttle, all the way to full throttle, the numbers rise steadily. And that's what the computer uses to determine how far open the throttle is. And the way it works is actually really simple. It's just a variable resistor. There's a shaft that goes through the throttle plate and into the throttle position sensor. And I will show you. So all it is is a shaft with a square edge on it. And as the throttle plate rotates, the shaft rotates. And that turns the inside of the throttle position sensor. And when you turn the inside, it changes the resistance. So let's show you how that actually works inside. OK, 10 second electrical tutorial. Um, now we've got a twisting motion, we need to convert that into a voltage. How do you do that? Well, you need to know uh, one basic thing about electricity. Um, pencil lead is actually a conductor, and it's a great uh, material to use for this example. So when you flow electricity through a wire, it loses energy along the way. And as a result, the voltage drops. And so what you can do when you want to know the, the mechanical position of something is flow some electricity through a circuit and then check the voltage somewhere along the circuit. And that's exactly what the throttle position sensor does. So I'm going to show you here with a real quick example. We're going to throw a current, flow a current through this pencil lead circuit. And then I'll show you how the voltage drops across it. And then we'll jump into the real thing. All right, so we take our circuit here. We're going to apply 5 volts across our circuit. So now we have a current flowing through our piece of paper, through our pencil lead. Bring in our voltmeter here. There we go. Now if we check over here, you'll see we've got 5 volts. Now watch. As I move my probe down the circuit, what's happening? The voltage is dropping, right? So what's actually happening is as the current moves through the pencil lead, it's losing energy. It's giving off some heat. And that results in the voltage dropping. When I get all the way over here, we're at zero, right? And then we move up. This is, would be about half throttle-ish. Move all the way to full throttle. So this is exactly how the throttle position sensor works. There's a mechanical wiper that moves up and down a piece of material that has current flowing through it, and the wiper is used to read the voltage at that location. And that's how we convert a mechanical position to a voltage that the computer can read. So let's dive into the real thing and take a look at how it works. OK, uh, what we've got here is a real honest-to-goodness throttle position sensor. I spent some time alone with it in a Dremel and uh, took it apart so we can see how it works. So we'll get rid of the cover. We've got a spring here that we don't need anymore. And right inside, we can see this is the, uh, the circular wiper that we talked about that rotates when you turn the throttle. And so let's see how it actually works. Let's plug it into our pro meter here. Give it 5 volts. There we go. And now there's no return spring, so it's not going to return automatically. But uh, we can see we're at 0.7 volts now. And as we rotate this, the voltage is going to go up. Rotate it back, it's going to go down. As you twist the throttle, that's what happens. So now let's see what's actually inside this thing. So this is the wiper we talked about. And you can see it's just a thin piece of metal. It's actually two pieces of metal. It connects uh, the conductor we're referring to to a different conductor that reads the voltage. And uh, so let's take a look. So those are tiny little fingers. And that's important. They do it that way so that it doesn't lose contact while you're bouncing through the whoops or hopping over things. Um, and when we look inside here, well, what's that? That is the circular conductor that we spoke about earlier. And it's on a flexible circuit board, essentially. And so what you've got is these lighter colors are wires. They're called traces in a circuit board. This is essentially a flexible circuit board. And this section here is the flexible conductor we were talking about. So this wire runs power through this conductor. And as the current runs through the conductor, it loses voltage all the way across. So on this side, it's going to start at 5 volts. On this side, it's going to have essentially no volts. And it's going to lose all the way across. So let's take a look. I've got my meters connected, since this one has a probe. This one will be easier to use for this example. So watch. As I touch over here, 
I had them backwards, so this is the zero over here. As you come this way, and that's full throttle, essentially five volts. And as I go back, see, a half throttle, you're somewhere in here. And as you go across this conductor, the voltage changes because the, the uh, electricity loses energy, loses voltage as it goes across the conductor, as the resistance eats it up. So that uh, energy is actually lost in the form of heat, but there's such a tiny, tiny amount of current that goes across that that you really couldn't measure it. Um, so let's see if we can do it now. Come back here since it's all connected and use our wiper. Maybe I can do the wiper. So what this actually does is connects the part of this conductor that we're interested in reading with the second conductor. And the second conductor is just for reading. It doesn't, uh, n practically no current flows through the second one at all. It's all just for voltage. So this is the one the current flows through. So we'll take our wiper here and see if we can do this manually if my fingers aren't too fat to be in there. So there we go. And as we slide it across, there we go. As we slide it back, down the idle, right? So when a TPS goes bad, usually what happens is, you know, something, one of these wipers, something will happen to it, or uh, something along this conductor will either get worn out and chip off, or maybe it'll get some dirt in there and it won't conduct all the time. You know, these wipers will touch the dirt and they won't make good contact or something like that. But, uh, but I thought you guys would find this interesting that it's just that simple. It's not complicated at all. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks. Bye-bye.